So if you're watching this video now, I've done it, edited it, published it, and now it's time to relax. So here I am on my hammock. This is the location where I am in the house. So yes, here I am in my hammock. I've done all the work. I've published the video. I've edited it. Now enjoy watching the video and you can see how much it would cost to live like this in Thailand. And it's not expensive. You'll be very, very surprised. So I'm going to go through all the prices, absolutely everything, the rental costs, the uh, cost of the car, the insurance, the medical insurance, blah, blah, blah. I'll give you a complete list of what I pay so the budget for living in Thailand depends on what you want out of Thailand. If you want parties, bars, entertainment, things like that, it's going to cost more. But I've lived in Thailand now for 12 years, and so therefore my living costs are totally different to somebody who, say, wants to live in Pattaya or Jomtiam in the entertainment capital of Thailand, really. Now, I married with a wife and... As I say, we've been married for five years. We've lived here for coming up to eight years now. And we've loved every single minute of it. So anyway, enjoy the video. And uh, have you got any comments? Leave the comments down below. And if you've got any questions, just ask the questions and I'll give you the answers the best I can. So I've just called out the beach because my, my wife works down here on the, on the weekend. I've just been shopping to Rayong getting all the bits and pieces to do a little bit of work at the house and I thought I'll call for some sausages and there's my wife busy she's got a few customers and she's cooking some sausages so she does this because she likes to do it she talks with the other Thai people things like that so she has a bit of fun on the weekend and she gets a little bit of money pocket money as well by doing it she doesn't make a lot of money but it, it gets her out of the house I do my bits and pieces on the weekend working like the videos and things like that so it's like a win-win situation but look at the the vista behind us what a nice place to work having that view whilst you're working it's better than sat in an office isn't it so this is the beach just down the road from me the tide's quite the way into it I've never really seen it this far in so it's taken quite a bit of the beach up with the tide coming in but just Look at the colour of the sea. This is Koh Samet. From our house to Koh Samet, it takes us about 30 minutes. We just drive to along there, which is Banpei, park the car up, catch a ferry across to Koh Samet, and you're there. It's beautiful. Now, now that the rainy season's gone, it's actually blue skies again, and it's, it's, it's got a little bit chilly because we're in winter season, but it's just perfect. Now look at this, this is just so affordable to live here and have this on your doorstep. Hi, Les from Retired and Living Dream. So let's get to the nitty gritty. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's go through the nitty gritty of the cost of living in Thailand. Now hopefully you've, now you'll have seen the little intro to my video with regard to where I live and that little excerpt by the beach where I went to see my wife. I've just been to the garden centre and got some bits and pieces for our, to finish our garden off. So this is where we live. Literally, maybe it's an eight minute drive from where my wife goes and sells the sausages on the beach. You're seeing the colour of the sea, you're seeing Corsa Met in the background. So we live in not a perfect holiday location because Rayong really isn't a touristy place but because it isn't a touristy place the prices of most things are quite quite reasonably priced in comparison say let's Phuket let's say Phuket or Koh Samui where it's stunningly beautiful but boy do you pay a price to live in a stunningly beautiful location and my thoughts on that is that once you've lived in a stunningly beautiful location for a while the shine wears off so I live in a, in a mediocre type of place. You've seen Kosa Met, which is 30 minutes away from where we live. A beautiful, stunningly beautiful tropical island with white flowery beaches. Now we can go there anytime, but we've been there loads and loads of times. So the, the sort of sheen on, of that has worn off. 
but this is the, the location that you can actually live in for a very reasonable price and I'm going to go through them prices a day. Now, whilst you're watching this video, I'm going to do a little walk around the house. Now, we've lived in this house for seven years altogether and we decided to buy it two years ago. Now, the reason why we're buying it is because at the end of the day, renting is just a, a sort of waste of money. The landlady or landlord gets the, the rental and we just get to live in a beautiful location for a reasonable price. So we're actually not paying much more to buy this house than that we did to rent it. As you can see, it's in a nice location, in a village location. The views from the veranda are beautiful and I'm going to lay in that hammock a little bit later on after I've done this video and edited. So now we're back from the tour. You've, you've had a little walk around the house. This is what you can get. Now the cost of this house rental before we actually bought it was 12,000 baht per month. Two bedroom, two bathroom, nice area, nice, nice surroundings, nice location. Five minutes drive from our local beach. There's a few restaurants close by. There's not that many bars, but we're not bar people, so it doesn't really bother us that. But if we want to go out drinking with friends, I don't drink and drive. So if we ever going out to a party somewhere where people are going to have a good drink, birthday parties and such as like that, we will stop in a resort, in a resort close to where we're stopping at the bar or something like that. And that's usually between five and 700 baht per night to stop in that. Now it's, that's cheaper than actually trying to get a taxi home because living in a semi-rural location, the taxis, you just can't get an Uber taxi or a Grab taxi. So that's one of the disadvantages of living in a semi-rural location. But the big advantage is the price, the prices of everything. Like I've said, 12,000 baht a month to live in a, a house sort of similar to this in our location. Now, we, in this location for Rayong, there's a guy renting his uh, three bedroomed swimming, three bedroom with a swimming pool for 22,000 baht a month. And I dare say if, if you ask him to drop it down to 20 for a, a year's contract, he'll, he'll do it for a year at 20,000 baht a month for us with a swimming pool. So, okay, here we're gonna go. We're gonna go, gonna go through some of the prices now. And there's, there's a few people have asked me actually to do this video because um, I've done two videos previous to the cost of living in Thailand. And now it's sort of the latest one about a year and a half out of date. But I'm, I'm gonna go through, through the prices. I'm gonna go exactly what I spend every month. Now, when I first did a video a couple of years ago, I was living on 50,000 baht a month. And that's maybe two and a half, three years or so ago now. So yeah, things have gone up a little bit and I'm paying out a little bit more money than where I was three years or so ago, even though we live in the same house. But here we go. So I've already mentioned renting a house like this that I'm living in is between 12 and 15,000 baht per month. Now, as I say, different areas, different locations, uh, closer to the town centre and things like that, it's always going to be a little bit more expensive. But look upon between 10 and 15,000 baht, and you can get a reasonable accommodation for that. Now, as I say, if you want to live in Pattaya or Jomtiam or Nakhloa, things like that, there's a the competition there is, is tremendous. So you, you can get some bargains if you want to live around Pattaya and Jomtiam and things like condos. Condos, you can get condos from 6,000 baht per month. But I'm, I'm interested in, or I'm here to talk to the people that, were, that have already got the girlfriend or the wife and are, are thinking about relocation or moving somewhere in Thailand. If you're a single guy, this, this price comparison means nothing to you because at the end of the day, if you, you still want to live the party life, um, it's going to cost you a lot more than what I'm going to say how much I'm living on here. So horses for courses. And if you're a single guy, it's going to cost you a lot more money than this. But if you're a single guy looking for a quiet life, this is how much you can live on. So the, um, what I'm going to do is go through what I spend every month. And what I spend is roughly 
60,000 baht a month. Now, three years ago, it used to be 50,000, but now it's 60,000. I'm going to go through the reason why it's 60,000 baht now and not 50,000. Like I said before, I used to rent this house and that was 12,000. And now because we're buying it, our, we've got a sort of a private finance loan and we're paying 20,000 baht a month. So instantly the cost of my living here has gone up by 8,000 baht. So that, that equates to the biggest part of it. And the rest of it is just everything's gone up with inflation and things like that. So still within 60,000 baht. For me, my wife, we live in a good location, we live a good lifestyle, we're never short of food, we eat in, we eat out, we do all sorts of things. And again, I'm going to go through the figures. So our rental cost for this house, uh, well, it's sort of a rent-to-buy deal that, that we've sorted out with our landlady, private finance. So that's 20,000 baht a month. And uh, I give the wife... 15,000 baht a month as housekeeping. She does whatever she wants to do with that. Now there's some controversy here. Some people are gonna say, you shouldn't be giving your wife anything. You should be giving your wife something. That's a completely different argument. Me personally, without trying to explain this to the reasons why I give her 15,000 baht a month. And there are many reasons why, you know, I give, give her some money because, so, so then she's got her own independence, but anyway, that's a long story with regard to, and I've been to many different arguments about paying or not paying and things like that. That's my personal choice. My personal opinion is that my wife doesn't have to be beholden to me to ask for every single penny, so I've given her allowance of 15,000 baht a month. Food bill. I buy all the food. We, I pay for all the meals that we go out for every single month and we budget 20,000 baht on that. Now it doesn't come up to 20,000 baht every month, but so, some months it comes up to 20, other months it might be 12 to 15. So swings and roundabouts, depending on how many times we go out eating and things like that. But roughly, we budget 500 baht a day for food. Uh, medical insurance, medical insurance, because I'm, I'm, I'm old now, and I've got medical insurance, and I've always had medical insurance since I've uh, moved here to Thailand. And that's 25,000 baht a year, I, but it goes up every, every three or four years with inflation and stuff like that. So I budget roughly 2,000 baht a month for my medical insurance. Um, I also budget for maintenance for the car, 500 baht a month, so that's roughly 6,000 baht a year. And that covers the maintenance cost when it goes in to get maintained by the proper Nissan garage. So I don't take it to a back street garage. I always take it to the, to the proper um, garage and that's Nissan. Uh, petrol, we spend about a thousand baht per month for petrol. The internet, we pay 418 baht, but rounded up to 500 baht with regard to the internet. It's not the best service, but it's, it's big enough and fast enough for what we want to do. Uh, water, 100 baht, 100 baht a month, less than 100 baht a month, but I've rounded up to 100 baht a month. So electric, electric, we pay 1,000 baht a month for our electricity bill. Now that's not a lot in comparison to what other people pay. It's because we don't use the air conditioning. My wife doesn't like the air conditioning on being in the bedroom. So we, we just have a couple of fans and we have fans around the house. We do have air conditioning in, in the main room. So occasionally when it gets really, really hot, we'll put the air conditioning on just to cool the room for a bit. But majority of the time we have the fans. Now majority of people that live over here, that's the biggest part of their electricity bill is the air conditioning. So learn to live without the air conditioning, just a fan or whatever, natural ventilation of the house, which helps everything. And that'll keep your electricity bills down. So tot all them lot up, it comes to 59,000 or whatever. So let's just round it up to 60,000 baht. So can you make any savings on that? Of course you can. Now, as I said, there's no need to pay 20,000. If you're just renting a house out here, you can get anything from 6,000 upwards for a condo in, in Pattaya and things like that. And you can even get condos and, and apartments and one bedroomed houses around my location for a um, 8,000 baht a month. Beautiful, stunningly beautiful with a gardener that takes care of all the garden work as well. So again, food, 
that includes everything for eating out 20,000 baht. Anybody can cut down on that for sure. Um, the insurance, as a medical insurance, that, that's, you can't really cut much on that. 500 baht a month, if you don't have a car, if you just have a motorbike, then that will save you a lot of money as well. Uh, petrol is about 1,000 baht a month. If you just have a scooter, you know, easily less than 1,000 baht a month. So the internet, 500, now it's the same majority of people want internet, so you can't really save much on that. Um, so yeah, 500 baht. Water, 100 baht a month, I fail to see how much you can really, really save on 100 baht a month for the um, water. 1,000 baht a month, I would say that's quite reasonable with the living conditions that we live. So in amongst them prices, there are certainly prices that you can re um, claw back on a little bit. As I say, I give my wife 15,000 baht a month housekeeping as well. That's my own personal opinion. That's my own personal choice. And I have my own reasons for doing that. But as I say, so 60,000 baht, that's how much I spend personally every month. And I can live a good lifestyle on that. I can live a far better lifestyle on that than I ever could in the UK on that amount of money. So I've got no complaints. It does me, I'm happy at that. I live a good lifestyle here on that amount of money. So what do you think? Leave your comments down below with regard to that. And one one final thing um, before, um, before, before we finish this video, and the biggest cost is, if for those people who want to live here full time, if you can get rid of your um, house, payments for like rental and things like that if you bought it cash so you didn't have any rental payments to pay this house that we're living in now is probably worth about three to three and a half million baht so to give you some idea three three and a half million baht this house here is my very very first house that I bought when I was 23 years old back in England. It's a one bedroom semi-detached bungalow and that now is going for the same price as what you could pay for this house here. And the lifestyle, I couldn't live the lifestyle that I live here back in England. So which would you prefer, this house here or the house that you've just seen? So as far as that's concerned, living costs within Thailand, um, th there are many, many more things to say with regard to living in Thailand um, for costs and things like that. Here we are now in November, and this is the temperature, 31.3 in, uh, in November. So it's, it's, it's in the cooler season now, so it's lovely. You can still walk around in a t-shirt. The sun, the blue sky makes you feel better about living and when all said and done feeling good inside is priceless so how much are you paying where you are is it time to make the move bite the bullet have a look at elsewhere even if it's not just thailand if it's somewhere else go live somewhere where you get better value for your money thailand for me I'll never ever move from Thailand. I'll never ever go back to the UK because I love it here. I've been here for 12 years. I've been out of England now for 14 years and I never wish to go back. So give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe, it'd be very nice. Leave your comments down below. Until the next time, bye for now.